right, the Reds. The Reds have won. It's the post-match pint. We've beaten Sheffield United. We've beat VAR and referees. We've fucking won, and we're right on the coattails of the Blue Noses. Uh, all we need now is Southampton to beat them 7-0 tomorrow, uh, and we'll laugh them. Carl tells me we will go top in that circumstance. Oh, so, you know, fi- f- fingers crossed. Uh, I have got Carl, I have got Martin, and I have got Ben Jono with me. Um, and yeah, it was a bit of a mad game on it. Uh, Jono, I-, I thought Sheffield United did well, to be fair to them. Uh, played a lot better than I've seen them play so far this season, basically. And I was kind of waiting for them to run out of steam, and they never did. But I also do think that that decision to give them a penalty, a very fucking generous one, by the way, like sort of changed everything because they started shite. We started well. They looked all over the show. One lad's got a booking after about three minutes. We've nearly scored after one. And then next minute, they're like, oh, we are. Oh, yeah, we'll have a pen. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) it was wild, that decision. I think it's the worst of the lot. Mm. To be honest, I mean, I, I agree with you. I thought Sheffield United were really good after the pen. I mean, it, you know, they're struggling for confidence, whatever. They, they, they got one nil up. They didn't really deserve it. I mean, they played well first half. They were the better side once they, once they got given a goal. But the decision, I mean, <laughs> I, I just, it boggles my fucking brain, this VAR, mate. It really does. Because they, they said, right, OK, so the referees give a free kick. Lovely job. Smashing. Um, let's have a look at VAR, see if it's in the box. So then they're looking at it, and Mariner must be going, nah, she won the ball there, you know. But uh, I, can't, uh, I can't say it's not a pen because he's already given it, so I'm not actually allowed to do that. But what I can say is, it's in the box. So, sorry, Fab, we know you won the ball and the referee, but, but what we didn't know is you didn't win it outside the box, which we thought you did, and we gave a free kick. You actually won it in the box. So, it's yeah, a pen. No. That's fucking what? It, 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 and it's a pen because part of the lad's boot is on the line. It, I mean, that, when that, did that, that happen? When did that rule come in? They snuck that one in. No one tells you these things. It used to be in the box. That's not in the box. That's never been in the box. So that rule, and everyone was like, yeah, it's the rule. It's If it's on the line, it's a, it's a penalty. I'm like, yeah, does anyone explain this rule? When did it get fucking announced? They just snuck it in. It's like a... You know, it's like what the Tories do when, like, all mad shit's happening. Do you know what I mean? And they just go, oh, by the way, these mad new laws have just been announced when everyone's looking that way. I, uh, the, 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 I, I just, the, for the rest of the first half, I was just, like, watching and thinking, this is, like, some kind of sick dream. Do you know what I mean? It was like the Truman Show. And you're banging your head against the big bubble. Um, yeah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's my analysis Sorry, I, mean, mate. I mean Martin it, it is it is I think testimony to, to Liverpool's character again that they've emerged the other sides of what was a mad fucking decision and they've won the match and as I said before you know Sheffield United did play well I think you know a lot of what Liverpool have done tonight is mainly sort of digging in there are some good performances in there don't get me wrong I thought Mo was amazing and the goal that wasn't if you like is such a travesty that it's not because it's a fucking brilliant touch and finish and I was absolutely gutted when that was ruled out. But in, in general, you know, Liverpool Liverpool are showing some grit and some character here, aren't they? Because everyone's writing them off. Everyone's saying they can't win the league without Van Dijk. You know, obviously the Derby situation also felt a bit like a defeat. We dug in against Ajax, we dug in against tonight. Yeah, and I and I I I think it's important to acknowledge that because you know, like everyone else, you know, after that penalty. I think I just thought football's a bit weird now. I don't really understand it. And whatever it's become, it doesn't really seem to be favouring us at the moment. Like, he was unlucky to give away a penalty on the basis that he got the ball and the challenge was outside the area. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, mate, yeah. You know, the unluckiest decisions, I think. You know, you know, I wear glasses, right? And when I don't wear glasses, things aren't quite level. And I and I think something weird. I I my only explanation for this is a bunch of FOEs that have been called cunts for the every time they've stepped out of the house for the last 15 years are looking around the stadium and going, There's no one here. 
<laughs> do what we, we can do, do what, what we want. want. Yeah. We can do what we're in charge. It's a free for all. <laughs> yeah, I can run around for 90 minutes and no one's going to call me a cunt other than the players, which I'm used to. So they kept saying on 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 like the, the you know what you know what I was watching. They kept saying he got some of the ball as if <laughs> the ball is in yeah. is in various constituent parts. <laughs> like he got the fucking he got the ball, all of it, because you don't you didn't like slice a bit off. <laughs> and I did, honestly, I I thought it was a bit of a weird one, and and I thought that you know Sheffield United are a team that you don't want to go behind to because they are very organized and they do defend well and I I do think we showed a lot of character to win that game actually I think it's an important three points yeah Carl I mean I, I don't want to keep on going about that, no, that decision, but it is mad I mean like you literally see the ball move and it's like you know if you if he hasn't got the ball and he's got the man, the ball doesn't move like that, lads. Don't need VAR to explain that. Do you know, well, what I, mean? I think that's I think that's the thing. It's an emotional response. When you when when I saw it, I thought they've got to look at it because they're looking at everything, and that makes perfect sense. You've got to look at that decision. But I wasn't worried about it because the ball's literally gone away from where he was, and he's standing outside the box as he's doing it. I thought free kick. They had a bit of lucky there, I thought, because that could have got you know another inch or so, we could have been in trouble there. And he gives it. And all, all I'm thinking of, lads, just just blow your whistle when you want and have a pen. That, that's what it felt like at the end of that. It was just really strange. I mean, things like the, the Salah's um, offside goal, you know, when you watch it, you think, that, that's going to, I wouldn't be surprised. That's quite close. Yeah, fair enough. You get like that emotional thing too. That one, I was I was totally done by my <laughs> lack of emotion on it. I just literally couldn't believe what I was watching. It doesn't make sense. Even if you think, you know, can you just give us a week off from shit decisions, please? I, I, well, I thought, that, I thought, I mean, I don't know I if you, that... you watched the Man United game or not, but you yeah. know, I'd come out of that, hadn't hadn't seen Chelsea not get a penalty yeah. for Maguire yeah. choking a player. <laughs> and then that happens, and it's like, how have you give that and you didn't give that? What, yeah. What's going on? We're in a pandemic, the world's fucking wild, you're making yeah. mad decisions. I don't get anything. I, I, I said the Truman Show show the other day when, when they said Norwich fans could go to the ground, sit in a bar and watch the match, but they couldn't oh, with, yeah. the <laughs> with the curtains. With the This is the Truman Show. It's got to be. There's someone on satellite TV watching me go, watch watch this when he sees this now. Because it's. I thought, I thought the sort of weirdest one was that, was that Jota definitely gave away a penalty. Yeah, no. Like, and and then they went, thought, they thought, nah. We took the piss with that other one. But we're not even. I mean, I thought that was a definite. I, I, I wouldn't have had a complaint about that. More I, thought a pen he, a pen. I thought he stuck his leg out. Yeah, I mean, on the basis that there was no ball involved and it was in a penalty area, <laughs> it, it, you know, it had. A, I think it had more going for it. But I, I think they looked at each other, or they were in the all-night garage getting against us, and they just missed it. Because who's the fuck? Who's watching these people? Yeah, who's what they're doing? Well, no one's no one's allowed in the VAR room with the VAR fella no more, are they? So there's not a team of them because they've got to socially distance, and it's only like a little shitty container with no windows. There's just one. So, so there some, it's, like, it's like some bloke in solitary confinement. <laughs> He's like, been in there since the start. He's had to go. You know, <laughs> fucking Papillon <laughs> drinking his own <laughs> drinking his own piss. Chalking up things on a wall, going to give that a penalty. That's yeah. And then a guard walks past and just fucking calls him a cunt. <laughs> Big massive beard given penalties in about four months. <laughs> He's met best mates, best mates with his chair. <laughs> All in his chair, Wilson. <laughs> I mean, Jono, we, we should talk about the year 40 at some point. Yeah, it's silly. <laughs> um, he gets let out just like the Guildford Four, but there's just one of him. And like, no one recognises him. Go, Didn't you used to live like near us? Yeah. And then I went to Stockley Park for 25 went to, went to years. Stockley Park. Gave away a load of penalties. <laughs> went for like challenges in the centre circle. And now I'm married to this chair. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, the 40, Jono. Uh, with the actual 40, uh, obviously there was uh, Alison coming back and Jota was in the side 
and he went with a different formation. Wasn't entirely sure that that was working for, for much of the first half. Like, one of my mates was messaging me saying, oh, Jota looked good, and he did look good, and obviously scored a goal. But I thought it looked a bit like, and again, it's hard to tell sometimes on a telly when you're not in, and you're not in the ground, you can't see the shape properly, but I thought he didn't really know what was going on with the shape. It was a bit like, where am I meant to be here? Yeah, yeah. It didn't work first half, I don't think at all, really, the shape. And I think Jota was the unfortunate one. Because I think they were trying to get sort of Firmino to drop in and Jota to go to try and pull their centre arms. I don't think we're just like... <laughs> We're just going to go with Firmino and there's another fella waiting for Jota. And it just we just couldn't get on. I thought they were excellent first half, to be yeah, fair. Um, and there was no space. There was no time on the ball. Liverpool didn't move it quickly enough. Uh, and we looked a man light in midfield, to be honest. And we, we looked like we didn't really know who was going to create anything. I think our most creative player was probably Henderson. He's the only one who was trying to get the game going. Um, we were much better second half. Much better. I think we I think we were a bit more compact. Um, I thought we were stretched first half. We were, the defence was deep and it, 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 we, we were just a bit of a nothing. Um, but I thought, that, you know, you've got to give Liverpool really, you know, loads of credit for finding a way to win the game because once they start doling them decisions out, mate, first half, then mm-hmm. you've got every right to... And even, you know, even, you know, the Salah ones offside. But if you're playing and you see someone do that, and you see the flag not go up, and you think, get in. It, you know, we, we've got to, you know, thank what a goal, what a brilliant goal. We've, we've, we, you know, it's easy for your head to go down. And they've done well to just carry on uh, and keep going. And, and it's a great win. You know, in the context of the weekend, it's a great win. Five points at the City already. Yeah, you know, yeah. hopefully the Mighty Blues will drop some points at some point. I mean, it doesn't look likely, but, you know, you, we just keep clinging onto the coattails. We might get lucky. Yeah, I, I think I think John summed it, summed it up well there, Carl. Because you know, obviously we, we see what happens with City, and you're, you're desperate for Liverpool to take advantage of that. And then you're a little bit. Well, I'm not going to do it again, but you are surprised by the decision, obviously. But then I think there was, it was also quite surprising how well Sheffield United were playing and how hard it was for us to get through them. And the, you know, they were super organised. And, and like I, I thought they'd run out of steam. I thought they'd blow themselves out because they were pressing so well and they were everywhere. And I was thinking they won't be able to keep this up. But to be fair, they, they pretty much did keep it up and they still caused us some problems going the other way as well. Maybe when they just kept love and centre forwards on. Yeah. All that was in the an... second half. I don't know how many they are, but it was five like <laughs> ten minutes. I was uh, I, I I thought the first half was a case of one team not really known understanding their own formation against the side who really, really did. And I thought that's gonna make it more difficult than anything else. The fact that I was gonna change it second half. And yeah, we absolute bags of credit all rounds. I thought we were really good the way we stuck at it because it's really difficult when you know it's not quite working. I, I agree with John. I thought we were a bit slow. I think we were slow to the second ball a lot of the time as well. Um, for being, I thought it was quite shaky to be honest. I thought Gomez was brilliant, but it was uh, it's just a bit shaky at times. And like the, the equaliser kept coming when it did was massive. I was just such, and it was a good goal, really good goal as well. And it's. When we were a goal down, it's really easy for you, for you know, to shoulders to drop and think, fucking hell, especially the way it was given up as, as well. Just just tons of credit. And second in the league, and you know, we, we're getting there a bit by it's a bit. All right, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah, I think that's it, that, 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 on, on the stream I was watching that. Um, yeah, it's difficult at this point of the season because no one's really doing anything yet. People are dropping points all over the place. And to be honest, when he said second, I was like, I would thought we were third or fourth or something. I had no idea because. We're not used to drop, dropping five points in so few fewer games, but uh, it's a really big win. Now. It's a really, particularly after Ajax as well. Yeah, that's a really big win. Well, I mean, what I was thinking about it as well is Martin. Surely, at some point, you know, if we just keep winning, they're gonna have to shut the fuck up about Van Dijk because they, you can't keep saying you can't win without Van Dijk and mm. they're winning, winning, winning. So you know, that's another one now. Um, you would expect them to beat Midgetland, and then uh, you've got West Ham next weekend. Um, and then, you know, all of a sudden then, can we stop talking about Liverpool can't win without Van Dijk then? Surely? Yeah, I, I just think we need to... I just think everyone needs to get used to that. You know, he isn't going to be there. Um, I, th- I think I think Gomez is slowly growing into the season. I think Fabs is fine. I mean, I think he did have a shaky half, but... You know, he's, he's entitled <laughs> to that after after what happened. But I think I think he'll be fine. And I thought that 
the, the intent that they showed with starting with Jota was, well, look, we just need to score more goals. You know, there's, we haven't got our best player at the back, but we have got... It was good to see that Alisson declared himself fit. You know, I like that. You know, no need for any doctors. I'm not sure what moment he declared himself fit. I'd bet my fucking house it was five minutes into the Ajax <laughs> game <laughs> when Adrian <laughs> nearly started to fight with Joe Gomez. And I reckon he texted Klopp at that moment and he said, do you know what I feel like? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't need an expert or anything. I just think I feel all right. He said, are you sure? Well, the other fellas just started a fight with the centre backs <laughs> on that basis. Yeah, so I think he's a big. I think he's a big plus, but I think the mentality is the most important thing, and it was it was pretty good. I thought up the Reds. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and Ben, I thought like one or two things what which we've been griping about and touching on. You know, like so you know the Firmino question has been there sort of every week and it's getting dead bored. And well, he's put one in the back of the net now. And okay, it was only a tap in. But, you know, sound, good. That's over and done with. He scored at Anfield. You just can all fuck off. Uh, and then also I thought Trent as well. Obviously, he has his bit of a uh, Beckham attempt, which was quality. But also I just thought in general, he looked more switched on, a bit brighter. You know, he was he was trying to, like he played a great ball to Mo at one point, which took some great last-ditch defending to stop Mo getting on the end of. But I just thought, you know, that's the trend that I remember. That's the trend that I know and love. And he's been missing a little bit. But, you know, maybe he's back or he's on his way back. Yeah, I thought the pair of them, I thought Trent was really good. Um, and, and I think you're right, yeah. I think he's, you know, he's growing into the season. He, he didn't have loads of pre-season. I think he was injured pre-season. So, you know, it's easy to, it's easy to forget that, you know, I mean, you look at City. I think City are struggling. United are struggling because they didn't have a pre-season. So it's not, it's not very fair. Do you know what I mean? But, I mean, if it was us, mm. I'd be going berserk. We just haven't had a pre-season. This isn't a fair competition. Seeing as though it's not, I'm not asked. I'm made up. But I think, you know, the same goes for the players. You know, Trent didn't have much of a pre-season. Um, and he's, you know, I thought he was really good today. I thought he was excellent. Um, you know, all them cross-field passes were, 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 were spot on. Um, he got about the pitch really well, and and you're right. The, the goal for Firmino just shut a few people up, and Liverpool winning without Van Dijk shut a few people up. And that's, you know, sometimes in footy it's really good to just get your head down and win. Yeah. You know, we, yeah, you know, I I almost thought we spoke a little bit too much about Van Dijk. I thought, you know, after, immediately after the game, uh, yeah, speak about it all all you want. Then the next couple of days, speak about it. I thought at the point at which they were going into a press conference about Ajax, they should have shown. Sure. And just said, look, we're going to miss him. He's a great player. It's a shame he's injured. We'll leave it at that. We never. But I think they're now looking at it thinking, well, let's just win our games and then see where we are. Let's just keep winning our games. So we be, if, we, if we, we win Tuesday, that's two, you know, six points out of two games in the Champions League. You only need to win the rest of your own games and you're through pretty much, you know, you're through. Um, and the league, if you win against West Ham, then you, all of a sudden you're going into City away. Probably top if not seconds in the league that's not a bad position to be you know if we win if we win against City we'll be if we win against West Ham we'll be five points ahead of City going into that game alright they'll have a game on us but if someone has offered you that at the start of the season you'd have snapped their hands off um, so you know Liverpool do really well get your heads down win your games win your battles um, and they've done that well tonight. They, they, you know, they dug in to win the game. They probably just about deserve to win it on the second half performance, but mainly for the bollocks that they showed. And, you know, long may it continue. They'll have a similar challenge against West Ham next week. They'll do a similar thing, three at the back, a couple of car horses in midfield and some strength up front. And it'll be a similar challenge. And hopefully, you know, we'll have Thiago fit. Yeah, missed him today. Yeah, and, and, if, and if he's fit, that game's a doddle because yeah. he's that good. He's like, he's like a magician. Um, so yeah, you know, other than the fact that we can't go out and VAR has gone berserk, it's got a fucking virus. Um, it's sad, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Car- Carl, who's, who's who's stood out for you today? We mentioned a couple there, but if you've got to go sort of man of the match territory, who are you going for? It sounds really cruel saying like he won't say well, but I thought Gomez was brilliant today. 
I thought it's particularly the way he covered for uh, Fabino in the last minute when he was getting done by those Oliver Burke, one of the Olivers, uh, did Fabino a couple of times and the way he covered him in the last minute. So that's just typical the way he's done it tonight. I thought it was, I thought it was really good. And he had some good balls as well, didn't he? I thought, I thought he was trying to do the Van Dyke, you know, yeah. long yeah, raking ball thing and, and to some effect at times. Yeah, that, that's what I, mean. I just thought he led really well for the back tonight. I thought Henderson was good as well. So you're going Gomez? Gomez, yeah. Martin, who are you going for? Uh, <clears throat> I think Henderson. I think, like, if you take away all of the sort of madness of the start of this season, I think Henderson's quietly in a in the form of his life right now. I thought he was great tonight. I thought they were often with a midfield too, really, and he just drove us forward all night. He's pinging it everywhere, and his his passing was exceptional. Um, I thought he was amazing. Very good. Okay, so one Gomez, one Henderson. What are you saying, Ben? I thought Salah was excellent, but I think I'd go Henderson as well. I thought he was brilliant. I thought first half he set the tempo. He was the only one who looked <clears throat> like he was going to win his first balls, win his second balls. You know, get playing the ball first time. And I think second half he was he was he was brilliant. You know, the last minute and he, he gets it and runs eighty yards down the yeah. left wing. Just to kill some time, he was brilliant. Um, yeah, I thought he was fantastic, and I agree with Martin. He's been he's been our best player so far this season, I think. You know, and that takes some doing because Salah's been incredible. Mm. Yeah, and he was incredible again tonight, and he was unlucky not to score. But Henderson's uh, Henderson's so important to this team, uh, especially with no Van Zijk. He's mm. and, he, and it's almost like he's like, yeah, I'm just gonna drag us. I'm just gonna drag us where we need to be, and that's absolutely sound. I thought, right. I thought Trent was good tonight and I enjoyed the fact that he tried to score from the halfway line just to see whether it would get ruled out for offside or not. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can't do that. that. That's what it's come to. That's, <laughs> where, we, that's where we are now. It's like Tom <laughs> Bowler, isn't it? You just put their hands in and Tom Bowler and pull it out and go, yeah, yeah it was offside. Offside. I just reckon there's loads of like ex referees just sat at home, like going to the missus. Oh, he's right. You know, get the champagne out, love. I'll get some more media work this week talking oh, about definitely. how shit these fellas are. All I now. find it so strange that there's a there's someone somewhere, and I and I, I don't know like why is it a park? What the what the fuck is Stockley Park anyway? <laughs> park. Right, it sounds like it's some like enigma breaking shit. That they're like yeah, trying so, to yeah. like, fucking like solve World War Two all over again or something. <laughs> like just fucking get over it. You got the ball, you can't. Yeah. You don't need to crack a code or anything. But there's someone sitting there in this massive game, just like can like a big, big and everyone's just like a puppet on his strings. <laughs> He's just going. It's like he 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 can just control EastEnders, the news, everything. He's like he's like Zeus, isn't he? Yeah, it's watch this then. Just who is he? <laughs> He's like in charge of our world. He defines our weekend. <laughs> and never yeah. speaks and never justifies what he's doing. Uh, just well, fucking does what the fuck he likes, and then he gets him at the same job again next week. And it's well, like... as far as I can tell, like that that coot bloke for the Everton game, like he, he's not even a referee. That's the best bit. He's never actually. Like that, that, I think that fella's never even refereed. He was a ref the next night for uh, for Leeds was and Villa. Oh, yeah. was he? Was he? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. He walked yeah. around basically, so you know he came out of the booth and ref the match, and the fella who was refing oh, went yeah. in the booth. Michael Oliver did it. Yeah. Literally the fucking next night, and it was like, hang on. Oh no, the Monday night, yeah. and it was like, hang on, you both fucked up royally on Saturday. Why are you getting another gig this quick? You know imagine I mean? if like, he got. Imagine if he got let out. He got let out of that. That's the first time he's been out of that fucking cage for six months. And he has to go and ref a game. And he's starving. <laughs> so I just shaved him, lashed him in a kiss onto the pitch. He's like he, he's like in that he's he's like in that castaway film with like half the football going, What do you think, mate? The Blow that whistle. Even, yeah. Blow the whistle. And the half the football's not even talking to him. <laughs> Should we just call it offside then? I've got <laughs> Let's just give it offside. I've got to be in Leeds tomorrow. <laughs> well, this is a this is a free post match point. Um, <laughs> is it? Yeah. So uh, you know, a lot more people will maybe watch than normal. 
I don't know what to say to you. I mean, it's been different. <laughs> we don't normally get fully stuck into the referees, but, you know, I've got to say that on the basis of what went on earlier, you know, it, it, it's more than right that we did. So, uh, anyway, nice one, boys. Uh, that has been the post-match points. And if you enjoyed that, you know, subscribe to the Anfield Wrap. <laughs> Up the ads. 